there are a couple different ways to treat dyskinesia. Uh, if somebody comes to me and they are very, very dyskinetic, the first thing I will do is a very high dose fish oil, a very specific type of fish oil. Uh, it has to be DHA fish oil. Um, there's a really big problem with supplements, uh, quality control, does the does the supplement have in it what the label says? Because of the United States regulations on supplements, they are largely unregulated. So there is nobody ensuring that what is in the pill is actually what the label says it has in it. Um, with fish oil, there are a lot of contaminants, uh, heavy metals, cadmium, mercury, things like that, PCBs. And so we do have a problem with the quality control of fish oil. I have a product I use a lot. It's a company called Pharmax. They make a product called Finest uh, High DHA, Pharmax High DHA Oil. I like the liquid version. And I learned this from a Canadian study. Um, they took primates who, who they first gave them uh, Parkinson's disease, and then they administered such high doses of levodopa that uh, the primates developed quite severe levodopa induced dyskinesia. What they did is they gave the primates five grams per day of DHA fish oil, which is a pretty hearty dose. And after 30 days, there was a 50% reduction in dyskinesia. Uh, I wanted to see if that translated to humans. And so I had two patients take uh, four grams a day. One tablespoon of the oil I just described is the equivalent of about four grams a day. And so I had people take one tablespoon a day for a month. And one person had a 37% reduction in dyskinesia. The other person had a 47% reduction in dyskinesia. So, it was not quite as robust as what they saw in the primate model, but I didn't use that same high dose. So what I'll have people do is a tablespoon of this high DHA fish oil for two, a month or two. It's a little uh, pricey, probably turns out to be about $40 a month, $50 a month. And it um, doesn't taste great. It tastes a little fishy. Some of the other fish oil I prescribe routinely taste much better, is less expensive. Um, but when what we're trying to do is treat dyskinesia, I will prescribe high dose DHA fish oil and within a month or two we have an easy 50% reduction already in the dyskinesia. And then um, what I will do after that is there's a supplement called citicoline or CDP choline. And what it does, we think that the mechanism is it makes you grow new dopamine receptors. And so what I can do there is I will start somebody on this supplement of citicoline. The best results come with two pills in the morning and two pills at night. Um, I think it's a pre-standardized dose. I believe the capsules are each 250 milligrams. So you have 500 milligrams in the morning, 500 milligrams at night. And you start that, and what happens is over the course of the month, your levodopa starts working better and better and better and better. And so what happens is at first you actually start to become more dyskinetic. A week or two after starting this supplement called citicoline or CDP choline, you'll actually know it's starting to work because, you know, after the fish oil, your, your dyskinesia started to improve. Now it's starting to get bad again. That is a sign the citicoline is making your drugs more effective. And so what you can do is say you used to be on 12 pills a day, all of a sudden as the, as the levodopa becomes more effective because of this supplement, you can go down to 10. You can go down to nine. And over the course of the month, what will happen is your medications get stronger and stronger and stronger. And what, what you essentially let yourself do is you have a patient who used to be on 12 pills a day, having bad side effects, this dyskinesia, but the meds still work, but they were having the dyskinesia. First thing, can I take this for my kid? This is yeah, sure. Now oh, I do. Okay. You gotta make sure that's on there. <laughs> there be a problem. Um, so 
by adding the CDP choline in, you can make your eight pills work as well as 12. And that really also makes a huge difference in reducing the dyskinesia. So, so kind of I have this two-part strategy and it takes a couple months and it requires a little coordination between the patient and the physician. It's not a magic bullet that kind of makes it all go away overnight, but it very, very, very consistently works. So the first thing I do is I, I use the high dose fish oil to cut the dyskinesia in half. And then I come in with this nutritional supplement called citicoline that makes all your meds work a little better, allowing you to essentially reduce your dose by a good 30%, if not as much as 50% while retaining all the benefit. That lets you get, have your cake and eat it too. You get all the symptomatic benefits of the levodopa, but you don't need these high doses anymore that were causing the side effect. So that is how I treat levodopa's number one side effect, the dyskinesia. In my clinical practice, I test people's omega-3 fatty acids. I essentially test the fish oil in their blood. Um, when we talk fish oil, we're talking about these two fats, EPA and DHA. And as part of my baseline workup, I test all of my patients to see what their EPA and DHA levels are. People who are low get fish oil prescribed to them on day one as a supplement so that they're, I'm keeping their levels adequate. That's probably why I don't see many people develop dyskinesia. Um, no study has shown us that the, this is true or not, but I, I've been in practice a long time and I just don't see patients going on to develop dyskinesia. And I have to believe that part of the reason that that's happening is we don't wait for the dyskinesia to start to give this huge dose of levodopa or fish oil. Instead, um, before they even start medications, I am, I am making sure that they have as much omega-3 fatty acid as they need so that uh, I guess my hope is that it'll just prevent dyskinesia from ever starting. Um, the other reason I think people in our clinic don't get much dyskinesia is, is we don't just target dopamine from the medication perspective. I think that when in, in the old days, when, when a phys patient would go into their neurologist and complain of a new symptom, when the only tool in the toolbox was levodopa, it was really easy for the doc to just say, take more, take more, take more. And we would keep hitting this disease from the same direction and you burn that bridge. These days, not only do we have, you know, the, the MAOB inhibitors, amantadine, agonists, all these other drugs, we have really come to appreciate that exercise makes dopamine, that, that good social connection makes dopamine, and I think physicians really are getting better at what we call dopa, um, dopamine sparing strategies. There are, there are things that you can do to boost dopamine that aren't dependent on levodopa. So if you can kind of hit your, your dopamine augmentation goals by things other than levodopa, I also think that that really helps not get as much uh, dyskinesia as people used to get.